Welcome in, everybody, to our WVUA 23 one-on-one -on -one interview series that we do from time to time. Uh, I am just absolutely thrilled, and it's my pleasure to be joined by Wimp Sanderson, longtime Alabama basketball coach, 32 years in total as an assistant and a head coach, and then, of course, went on for five seasons at uh, Arkansas Little Rock and, and produced a great player there, uh, Derek Fisher, and had a couple really good teams at Arkansas Little Rock. But we're mainly going to focus on his career at Alabama and his playing career too, Coach. Thanks for joining me. Glad to do it, Gary. I want to start there because I don't think you get enough credit as a player. I've never heard you talk about your playing career, but you were a good player coming out of Coffee High School. You went to Abilene Christian, came back to, yeah. to, to North Alabama, and uh, scored a lot of points. Well, I did. I wouldn't guard anybody. That's the reason I'm trying to get people, <laughs> that's yeah, that's yeah, that's reason I'm trying to get people to guard somebody when I coached them. But uh, I was okay. We it was, uh, it was a good basketball team at times, but we uh, – and we struggled at times, but I, I enjoyed playing, and uh, I was um, I was probably a little bit below being able to play Division One basketball. At six three, were you? Uh, I guess back in those days, I was a true front coach. Yeah, a little right? bit. I played, you know, I played at the far position, played some post post, and Hayden Riley uh, was my high school coach. Mm -hmm. And um, when I had the opportunity to go down to Alabama uh, after one year at Carbon Hill, I decided I would go for. Little or nothing. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I did that, I felt like, you know, I could make it for a year and it can go to work. And then after a year, I can get a better job somewhere. Yeah. So I went, uh, I went for a lot of money. I went for $75 a month. Wow. Yeah, 75 And I lived in the barracks <laughs> right next to where Coleman Coliseum is today. Uh -huh. uh, I can't remember the name of the barracks off, offhand, but uh, I'll think of it. Well, if you had to pay rent, you couldn't yeah, take yeah, a job. No, I could pay. And so, it, and I had one child. And so I decided I'd put in an air conditioner. Uh -huh. And I, I'm not very, I can barely turn on the light. And I worked for three days to get this air conditioner in. I plugged it in, it wouldn't work. Right. And they said, uh, your air conditioner's a 220, we only have 110. So I couldn't, I, the, I, had, I, I, I all couldn't use it after all that work. So that's kind of the history of me. But I, I lived right next door to, to Coleman Coliseum. Yeah. Um, I don't know, for $35 a month, I guess it was. Yeah, I'll be. Well, you kind of already mentioned that you, you, you started your coaching career. Did you know, when did you know you wanted to be a coach? When it was when you were playing? Well, I, I thought about it, yeah, a little bit. And uh, I, I, the problem I had getting a job out of college was I, I didn't know any football. Mm -hmm, yeah. And uh, so that, that kind of hindered me. But uh, I finally got a call from, the, from the, the basketball coach who moved to be the principal, Hollis Thompson. And he said, Wimp, I'm going to be the new principal. How about coming and taking my job? And I did at Carbon Hill. And it was, we, I was fortunate enough to inherit a good team, won 25 games. And, um, you know, we had, a, we had a good little basketball team. And that was the one year that I stayed, um, you know, in high school before I went to Alabama. Yeah, one year high school coach, and then you're at Alabama. You mentioned Coach Riley. I, I didn't know him, but yeah. uh, you played for my – I know he was a great gentleman. Yes, and, he was. Uh, could coach multiple sports and did – uh, what was that experience like getting to, to be mentored by him in your initial coaching? Well, it was great. He was a mighty nice person. You called it just right. He was he was uh, worked, worked some with baseball, did some recruiting for him in football, and coached basketball. And he gave me the opportunity to be the assistant, and I, I did so and and worked there until CM came. Mm -hmm. Didn't win that many games, and, no. and and Coach Newton came in. Let's just jump to what happened once integration came in. Of course, Wendell Hudson, we know his story. What a great job he did of breaking the color barrier and also standing up to what he yeah. had to stand up to. But did you know as the recruiter or one of the main recruiters, you you had been combing the state. You, I guess you knew that the black players were there. If you could get yeah. them, it would change Alabama. Well, you're, you hit on the head. I, I did know where they were, and, and I didn't know how many we were going to be able to take. We took Wendell, and uh, CM certainly gets credit for that. And then we had Leon Douglas uh, and, and a lot of other kids, and – Charles Cleveland at, at Centerville and uh, uh, Booney Russell, who played mm -hmm. at Faulkner when Faulkner was a two-year school, mm -hmm. and on and on and on. And uh, the the thing I think maybe people don't realize, we had to work to get those kids right. because everybody that came in recruited against us said, you know, Alabama's not going to take you. You know, they they you know they may take a couple of minority kids, but not going to take many. And uh, it was uh, it was a fight to the, it was a fight to the end and. Uh, we had, to, we had to work at it. I think one of the things, Gary, that helped us off some was that back then there wasn't a contact rule. If you wanted to work and see them every day, you mm -hmm. could do so, and I, I just about did. Uh, Raymond Oldham was a football player that I saw practice football every day and played basketball for us. So it was a deal where I could see them a lot longer, a, a lot more times uh, than the people that came in to recruit against me. And uh, 
worked out most of the time for them to come to Alabama on unofficial visits, not official visits before I paid their way. So doing that with the Enos Watleys and the Bobby Lee Hurts and people mm -hmm. like that, my first year, I don't want to, I don't want to jump, jump CM's years, but my first year, uh, Watley and, and Bobby sure. Lee came out and it was, uh, I was scared that we were going to lose them. I worked real hard on Bobby Lee. I couldn't tell about Watley. And um, nobody really wanted me to have the job except Annette and the three boys. Everybody mm -hmm. was saying, you know, Coach Bryant doesn't want basketball. He hired Wimp. Wimp had whatever. <laughs> so it was it was going to be out, kind of a I'll show you kind of deal. Yeah, you so did. I, mean, I jumped like, forward a little bit. Well, no, that, that's okay because that, so. I, I want to get to that. And, of course, that first recruiting class, people might not remember, but Rex Jones and, and, and Mark Farmer were also in that recruiting yeah, class. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly right. Mark Farmer, <laughs> you know, Mark Farmer. Yeah. You know, from Arab Alabama, yeah. and we went out to UCLA the week that Coach Bryant passed mm -hmm. away, and we blew them out by two. And um, <laughs> I told Mark, and I start. I got uh, the funny part about it was Terry Williams. Terry Williams got suspended by me, which was mm -hmm. stupid. We had played. We had played out there. We had played Southern Cal and Georgetown with with Patrick. You beat the heck out of Georgetown, and we did. Winston entire class, and, and uh, he played really well. And uh, the UCLA assistant coach watched us play and he thought Terry Williams was really good. He had a lot of points. And I came back and suspended him. And then I took him on the trip and made him sit on the on the bench dressed in street clothes, which mm -hmm. is about as stupid as you can find. So anyway, uh, we we blow him out by two and uh, They were number one. Yeah, they were number one. Exactly right. You've got the best memory of anybody <laughs> ever ever interviewed me. And so they, they were number one and we won the game and it was it was a great thrill. And I told Mark Farmer I said both TV sets in Arab alone. So uh, he he was uh, he was a kid who played pretty good. He was and he was a big boy. Yeah, he sure was. Yeah. About I almost lost him to UAB. I got him the last minute, and, and uh, he, but he played some pretty good basketball for me. We're gonna we're gonna get to a break and we're gonna come back and backtrack a little bit because okay. I'll ask you about that '76 team with right. you and Coach Sanderson, John Bostic. But one little note on on Terry Williams. The thing I remember about that, of course, I was probably 19, 20 years old in that in that range, but following your teens was it was so unusual back then to have a guy 6'10". You basically played him at the two. Yeah. yeah. You basically yeah. played him as a guard. You had yeah. a huge lineup. Yeah, I did. That team that beat Georgetown, yeah. uh, that was yeah. a big team. Yeah, that was a good game for us. All right, we're going to take a time out. We're going to come back and, and revisit about 1976 because that was one of the great teams in Alabama basketball history and how close that team was to winning a national championship. Then we'll get into Coach Sanderson's teams. He had a couple that were, you know, just because you don't make it to a Final Four doesn't mean you weren't good enough to go to a Final Four. Alabama's had those teams. We'll also ask him if Alabama basketball would be viewed differently now had they made it to a Final Four. We're back with more with Wimp Sanderson from his home here in beautiful Greystone right after this. Welcome back to our WVOA 23 Sports 101 interview segment series with head coach Wimp Sanderson, uh, great head basketball coach at Alabama. Coach, we've already visited us and had some, some good memories. Uh, before we get to your head coaching career, I want to jump back to uh, your, your time as an assistant because when Coach Newton first got here, y'all weren't good. <laughs> no, we weren't. Uh, y'all couldn't beat anybody. Um, integration, you start recruiting the black players, and I think a lot of people don't realize this, you won three consecutive SEC regular season yeah. championships when Joe V. Hall was at Kentucky, yeah. and they had a run. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you're, you're misrepresenting things. We held Pete Maravich to 69. <laughs> without the three-point shot. 69 without the three-point shot. Yeah, I think you misrepresented it. Yeah. Hey, hey, get, we won the game by one. That's right. Sure did. That's, uh, no, you, 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 but, you, but you did turn it around. And you had just great teams in 74, 75, and it probably culminated in 76. And yeah. Coach Newton told me this a couple years ago when I interviewed him. He said, you know, the thing that's hardest as a coach, you don't get these opportunities often. But yeah. when you've got a team that you know is good enough yeah. to win it all, and you don't win it all. Yeah. And that team ran through the SEC, absolutely blew out uh, Phil Ford and Mitch Kupchak and Dean Smith in North Carolina. But in those days, there's no there's no seeding. You run into Indiana and Baton Rouge. And of course, they went 31-0. And it's a game that Alabama could have just as easily won as it lost. Well, there's no doubt about it. And you know me to know that I cry a lot. But uh, we had a block charge call at mid midcourt mm -hmm. that was really, really, really costly to us. And, and back then, Big Ten officials could call in, anywhere they call a Big Ten game, right. and they did that, and I, I, I've, I've really felt bad about that ever since. But uh, we did take a couple of bad shots late in the game, but you're exactly right. We had a heck of a team. Mm -hmm. uh, basketball team was, was talented. They played together. They knew how to play. They are pretty good defensively, and they had won 
when it had gone to Dayton and beaten uh, North Carolina by 16 or something. And it was uh, a basketball game mm -hmm. that uh, will always be on the minds of, of, of myself and and really, really great Alabama, I mean, Alabama basketball fans who really have kept up with it. Uh, that was a tough game. And you had good teams after that, but I don't know that uh, – Coach Newton was ever quite the same yeah, after that yeah. loss, and as he, as you, as we're going to get to your head coaching career, he made the decision to leave to go to the SEC office, right. and that opened up the job. As you said earlier, you don't think there were a lot of people in your corner, but Coach Bryant was in your corner. Yeah, he was, and and when Coach told me he was going, he told he gave me two or three reasons that he wanted to leave, and I'm not going to tell all of them, but one of them was he felt like he didn't want to go and fight again, go in and get in the battle against Gene Bartow. And naturally, I said, "Well, I'll fight. Yeah. I'll fight it because I, I want a chance to." But he and some other things that he wasn't happy with, and and so he he decided to get out. And uh, uh, I think the the Winchester third of the NCAA tournament that year, I had gotten a call from uh, from Tennessee Tech, and they had offered me the head coaching job there. And I and I was on my way to Indianapolis, and uh, I turned it down and recommended somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got there and walked into the room. Uh, CM said to me, you turn it down? I said, yeah, I turned it down. He said, uh, well, what if you don't get this job? And I said, well, if I don't get this job, I'm going to put my stuff in a paper sack and I'll be out the door. I don't know why I said that, but I will never forget I said, <laughs> I'm going to put my stuff in a paper sack and I'll be out the door. And you would. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I was out the door. Yeah, I, I'd been there so long, 20 years under yeah. two coaches that had, you know, I had done a lot of the recruiting to right. be to be honest with you, a lot of it, and uh, not all of it, but a lot of it, and uh, it uh, it was something I'd always wanted to do, and I didn't know how I would do, but we scratched and fought, and and I, I say that because, you know, Bobby Lee and and Enos were coming out, mm -hmm. and it was there were two big names, mm -hmm. and I, I know Barkley came out that year, mm -hmm. but Sonny already had him wrapped up because everybody thought we had Bobby Lee, and we couldn't we couldn't talk to Barkley right. much, so we were able to get those two. And uh, after that, we were able to get most of the time the best player yeah, in the state. Yeah. And your first team uh, was an NIT team. Yeah. But it was a good sure team. You were close. You, I think got, you we had got Ken a bunch Johnson, of injuries. Eddie yeah. Adams on that team. Yeah, we did. Uh, Eddie Phillips. Yeah. And um, you, as you said, the first big, big recruiting battles you had, because I think a lot of times people don't realize when you signed Enos Watley and Bobby Lee Hurt, that was like signing Colin Sexton. Sure. I mean, these guys were top 10 players. Sure, they in the were. In fact, yeah. I remember Street and Smith's which back before the internet was the Bible, and I remember the prep, the capsule on Bobby Lee Hurt. I remember it to this day. You know, there's little black and white pictures, and it said, for the Daryl Dawkins of the prep ranks, yeah. look no forward than yeah. a bull strong slam dunker Bobby Lee Hurt yeah. of Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah. And he was. He yeah. was physically, yeah. he was everything you look for. And Edith Wiley, I still think, might have been the most gifted player. Yeah, he was, he was very gifted. I was able to keep him two years right. because he was had a hard time in school. But but he was a heck of a player, and, and we were fortunate to get those guys. It, it was... Uh, it was, it was a good start for us, mm -hmm. and um, from then on, we, we had pretty good basketball teams, pretty good recruiting years. Speaking of that, uh, they come in as freshmen and talking about teams that were potentially good enough. Your 81-82 team was a really good team. You had Eddie Phillips as a senior. Yeah. Uh, you had Hurt and, and, and Watley as freshmen. You had some other really good, talented players. I think Cliff Wyndham and, and, and um, uh, who was the, the big center from – down there too was it? Uh, oh shoot, I can't remember. Uh, Bob, uh, Bob, uh, Lockett, Phil Lockett. Lockett. Phil Lockett. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah. So you you beat St. John's in a close one in the NCAA tournament, and then you get North Carolina, as fate would have it. I think right there in Charlotte, wasn't it? Yeah, and we got the worst officiated oh, yeah. game. Eddie Phillips had three that, that I had ever seen in my life. We got beat by five. Same score as you uh, lost yeah, to Indiana. Yeah, we, we, lost, we got beat five in a game that was the worst. And I can't think of the guy's name. The official they had they had jerseys for him, and he was. All been out of shape, and and uh, it was we we played North Carolina at North Carolina yeah. State. Oh, was at Raleigh, yeah. Okay. And um, and so uh, it was a very very hot day, and they, they put in new lights there for that game, and we played great. We were very good, and I just it was a, one of the most. I'm sure you'll ask me some of my losses that hurt me the most, and I think that one was it. And, and when I say that, you know, the first thing people say is Wimp's crying again, but I've always been to my detriment one that tell it, tell it like it is, mm -hmm. and I really think it was that way. It was a very poorly officiated game. We had a great basketball team. They win the championship. Yeah, and they went on, like you said, just like Indiana did in 76 sure. to win it all, and they beat you by the same score at yeah. 74-69. So now it's your program. 
Uh, we know in, in 12 years you went to, to 10 NCAA tournaments, the one NIT I mentioned, six Sweet 16s. So coming out of that year, I remember expectations were sky high for that 82-83 team. And that's the team that went to UCLA and won and beaten Georgetown. But then the wheels kind of fell off with yeah. that team. And that's the one that, you know, Bobby Lee heard said Lamar who, and yeah. that was the year you got beat 70 uh, 50 What happened to that team? We had some problems. Uh, we had some problems that I didn't know were that bad. And uh, we had some kids that, that were not ready to play, and I probably should have. We just had some problems, to answer your question, without getting into it. And it was a very disappointing loss because our kids didn't play hard. They weren't ready to play. Bobby Lee had said that didn't make any difference. But they, our kids just weren't ready to right. play. And, and uh, that's when they're not ready to play, it, it goes to me. And, it, and some of the losses in, in the tournaments certainly go to me. That was, a, was that the year we beat Kentucky in, in, for the championship? Uh, in Lexington. I think that was the year before. 82. 82, 82 yeah. was the year we beat them. So uh, it was a um, disappointing, disappointing loss, and, and uh, guys didn't play the way they should have played, and that was my fault. 1984 was another first round loss to Illinois State, 49 48. Yeah. But after that, Alabama started rolling in yeah. the NCAA tournament. I mean, every year. When we come back, we're going to jump in with those teams when. You thought it was a birthright to go to the Sweet 16. I remember people complaining about not getting past yeah. the Sweet 16. Yeah, yeah. That's how good it got. We'll be back with more with Whip Sanderson right after this. Well, they say time flies when you're having fun, and we're already in our final segment with Coach Wimps Anderson, so we got a lot of ground to cover in this final eight minutes, Coach. Uh, I mentioned 84. That was a disappointing finish of the season. But then in 85, uh, you got Buck. McKee was a freshman. You, you, you had a team that was athletic and, and could really shoot the basketball, and that started to run a three straight Sweet 16 teams for you. Um, all really good teams. That was the year that we went to uh, Denver and lost to NC State. Okay, went to Denver and lost to I was thinking about uh, uh, we went to Atlanta. That was, that was the, the next year. That was 86. Okay, so that was the year that they put three SEC uh, teams that's, there. That's what I wanted to say. I thought it was absolutely absolute ridiculous. It's a joke. Yeah, you it was Atlanta, a joke. You Kentucky, yeah. and LSU. And Kentucky had beaten us uh, several times already that year, and they beat us again. Eddie Sutton was the coach and did a great job, and we we got beat. So, uh, but it was a, a disappointing to, to do that again. Uh, to you know, have to play those guys that yeah. quick in the NCAA tournament. They don't do that anymore. No, and it shouldn't and never. It should have never happened. But it's unfair uh, to the we, SEC. We were, we were, it was and what was ironic was you had your problems with Kentucky, and then LSU wound up beating Kentucky. Yeah. They'll beat, beat Sutton, and they went to the Final Four that yeah. year. Yeah. But in '87, it was a, like a '76 team, a, a '82 team. It was a special team. Yeah. Uh, you went through the SEC, went 16 and two, and uh, I think yeah. one of those losses was an overtime loss. And of course, you had the championship clinch over Storm and Norman Sloan and, and the Gators down at Coleman Coliseum when McKee tipped in the, the J.J. Jackson shot. But um, you get to the tournament, you have your first round game against you know a, a lower seed. You were a two seed. You, you route them, and then you played your old buddy Benny Dees, your former assistant in New Orleans over here in Birmingham. And I think I want to say you shot seventy eight percent from the field. Probably scored one hundred and one points. I mean, yeah. it was one of the great offensive exhibitions. Yeah. And people were saying Alabama's going to the Final Four. Now Georgetown was the number one seed in your region. I think most people feel no. like Alabama would make it. And then you go to Louisville and you run into to Rick Pitino, a Providence team that shouldn't have got out of Birmingham. That's what important people I was fixing to to you. The guy had two free throws. <laughs> if he makes either one of them, the, ga the game's already yeah. – the horns have been blown. Yeah. And the and kid he, missed both of them. And you wind up yeah. playing them. And Dale Ray Brooks and Billy Donovan, they, what are you going to do? I mean, they shot the lights out they of it. They did shoot the lights out of it. And we should have gotten with and extended our defense more in the second half. Didn't do that. They shot the lights out. And we didn't have a very good inside game at all. And didn't have anything going with us, and they beat us pretty handily. That was a uh, uh, you, you talk about disappointing in uh, North Carolina. That was a bitter. We we, we won 19 out of 21 conference games. We had won the tournament. Uh, we had done. We had won eight out of nine on the road. Mm -hmm. We got beat at Florida, and uh, it was a team that was almost unheralded. It was an unbelievable team. Phenomenal. Yeah, it really was. And what really a big team. No, you had McKee, no. Ainsley, Jim Farmer yeah, started yeah, at the three, yeah. Godfrey and Terry Connor. Yeah. Not Terry Connor, yeah, yeah. special player. Yeah. J.J. Jackson off the bench, Dudley off the bench. I think he only went seven or eight deep. That's exactly right. You're, got a, you're terrific. But uh, it, it was a team that, that sort of came together and played played together very well and had good substitution patterns and everything just worked for us. And it was – Great, great basketball team to, to get beat the way that we got beat against Providence. It's nobody's fault but mine. You mentioned you won the SEC tournament. Um, 
Yeah, and all my great memories. I, I want to say you won. Uh, how many SEC tournaments did you win? Like five. five. We got in the finals. Uh, oh, you're in nine finals. out of twelve yeah. years. Yeah, and one. Well, that's and one ridiculous. Five, that's ridiculous. No, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's not supposed to be able to do that. All right, we're going to get wrap ahead a little bit because even though in '88 you took a step back after the Norby Walters, Derek McKee fiasco, yeah. and he, they proved he had signed with agent, he went pro. But you came back in '89, '90, '91, '92 with really good basketball teams. So let me ask you real quickly about the '89 team. Uh, Ori was a freshman. You still had Askins, um, another one of those real athletic teams, Melvin Cheatham. You go to Atlanta and you play South Alabama. Oh, you got a 16-point yeah. lead at half, and, and they beat you on them. You know, I forgot it was that much until you brought that up, but we did. And, and uh, they had a heck of a team, and we couldn't make a shot in the second half, and they couldn't miss one. But uh, we should have won the basketball game. And of all the games that I've coached, I have felt like that I didn't do a, a, enough to help our basketball team in the second half. But um, you know, we lost, and it was a bitter, bitter loss and hard to get on the bus and come home. And to I didn't read a lot of papers, but to know that they, they busted us pretty good because we wouldn't play them during the regular season. And uh, we didn't play them or UAB, and yeah. we felt like we didn't have to. And to get pitted against them and get beat was uh, certainly a, a heartbreaking loss. And then in 90, you, uh, I want to say, it was, was it Colorado State you beat in the first round? Mm -hmm. Good Colorado, Colorado State, State team. Colorado and then State. blew out Lute Olsen in Arizona. Yeah. I mean, he took them to the, they were the two seed, took them to Wichita. Yeah. And then you get Marymount. Yeah. Cinderella, of course, we yeah. know the tragedy with Hank Gathers. Uh, they had hung 130-plus on Michigan, the defending national champion. You hold them into the 60s. Uh, but Melvin Cheatham misses a shot that, let's be honest, he would have made nine out of ten yeah. times. And, and, and you lose a heartbreaker that yeah. year with another team that probably was good enough. You would have had to play UNLV. But athletically, you could have matched up with them. I don't think there's a week goes by or a month goes by that somebody doesn't ask me about that game and why I did it and what I did. And for some reason, they brag on what I did. You certainly don't need to brag on what I did because we lost. But uh, I had talked with all the coaches that had played them, tried to, but we stayed out in California after we beat Lutz's team. And uh, I stayed out there and called and got film and all and talked to the coaches. And they said, Wimp, you think you can run with them, but if you do, they're going to run you out of the gym as good as you are. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but naturally it was wrong. And we, we I didn't, I, all I wanted to do was just take the running game away from them. I could have done that without doing what I did, probably. Um, the, I, I give the kids credit for doing what I asked them to do. And most of the time when you go to something like that, Gary, they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But they 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 did, and, and we played okay, and got beaten a close game. All right, we're down to two minutes, but uh, you won 267 games at Alabama in 12 years. Phenomenal number. It's still the winningest coach in Alabama basketball history. But you were in your coaching prime when, when, you, when you left. Yeah. Uh, how many more years do you think you would have coached at Alabama and things not turned out? Well, I, all I wanted was another contract of four years. Okay. And uh, when, when they decided to release me, um, you know, it was the most difficult day of my life. All right. Well, we're just about out of time. I didn't even get to get into your, your hatred for Auburn. I don't use that mean literally, but the, the success you had against them was phenomenal. 30 seconds. Uh, would Alabama basketball be viewed differently because there's so much emphasis on the Final Four now if, if one of the great teams yeah. that you were involved had gotten Probably a little bit. Yeah, we, they were, you know, they were, I still think we had, I still think people think we had 12 great years. Uh, not tw did. all 12, but we know we had uh, great years. And, the plaid stuff caught on, which was ridiculous. That was, you know, it was We something. need another yeah, show, yeah, folks. So it, it, it caught on, and I didn't. The only problem with the plaid stuff is that it it, uh, it, it sort of highlighted me rather than the team. That wasn't right. good. But all of a sudden, it got people coming to the games, yeah. and it, it, just, it just really helped. Everybody wanted to find a plaid outfit to wear, and it worked. Didn't get to get into the play. I didn't get to get into the Sonny Smith yeah. relationship. A yeah. lot of things, because we got to cut it off. Okay, thank you. Thank so you. Much. you did a great job, Gary. Thank you, Wim Sanderson. One-on-one -on -one interview. That's going to do it. Thanks for joining us, everyone.